This is the Chapter 2 review for the most missed questions, and I hope this will uh, be helpful to you when you take the exam. First question, they want to know how much did assets change? They give us this information, <clears throat> and they say, for example, on the, uh, let's see, ABC Company received $23,000 cash from the issue of, of common stock on January the 1st, year 1. Let's record that first. Here's our accounting equation. And in this accounting equation, assets, the left side, have to always equal the right side, which would be liabilities, common stock, retained earnings. So let's record that first transaction. We've got cash of 23000 It goes up on the asset side. And on the right side, common stock goes up. Next transaction, ABC earned $9,300 revenue on account. So recording that transaction, we would increase accounts receivable on the asset side by $9,300. And on the right side, we'll increase retained earnings, which is a revenue, in this case, for $9,300. Both sides went up by $9,300, and everything's good. So next, let's see, we, uh, the company collected $7,600 cash from accounts receivable. So we'll collect that, or excuse me, we'll record that. <coughs> excuse me. And so cash goes up $7,600 on the asset side, and accounts receivable goes down $7,600. And what's happening here is we've got an increase in cash, but we have a decrease in accounts receivable, and overall assets stayed the same. Next, looks like uh, we paid $6,200 cash for operating expenses. So let's record that. So cash goes down $6,200, and operating expenses under uh, <clears throat> retained earnings goes down $6,200. So both sides, the asset side and the liability equity side, goes down by the same amount, $6,200. And we're supposed to figure out how much did assets change. So assets, draw a line. Add up all the cash transactions, and when you combine all the cash tra transactions, they come up to a plus uh, $24,400. All the accounts receivable transactions added together come up to a plus $1,700. And so that looks like assets changed, or they increased by the sum of these two, which would be $24,400 plus $1,700, or $26,100. Now to make sure and check yourself, go over here on the other side. And we've got common stock of 23000 And when you combine retain earnings, the uh, items there add up to a net increase of 3100 These two together equal twenty-six one. So the answer is $26,100 increase in assets. Question two. Revenue on account amounted to $4,400. Uh, cash collections were on accounts receivable amounted to $2,600. And now uh, let's see what else we got. Expenses for the period were twenty-three hundred. The company paid dividends of five fifty. Net income for the period was what? So they want to know what was net income. So here's our accounting equation. We'll put down things that we know. For example, we have revenue on account amounted to forty-four hundred dollars. So that's going to be increased to accounts receivable. That's also going to be increased to retain earnings on the other side. So both sides went up $4,400. Next, uh, cash collections of accounts receivable amounted to $2,600. So we got cash going up on the asset side, $2,600, and accounts receivable going down $2,600. So overall, this side, nothing really changed. We just traded our, our accounts receivable for cash, which is a good deal every time. And then it says we've got expenses for the period were $2,300. So let's see, $2,300 comes out of cash, assets go down, and the retained earnings side goes down by $2,300. And so both sides went down $2,300 because of these expenses. And then finally, uh, we've got the company paid dividends of $550. So when you pay dividends, that comes out of cash. So cash goes down $550, retained earnings goes down $550. And now the question they wanted to know all along was net income. So what is net income for the period? Well, uh, net income is going to be, always going to be, revenues minus expenses. 
dividends do not affect income. That, that's something that, uh, that you take out of uh, retained earnings to give to shareholders. But the only thing that's going to affect negative income would be revenues minus expenses. So we have net income of $2,100. And now let's see, this isn't in the, anything that I'd ask you on a test question, but this is something that's good to know. Was net income for the period computed under a cash basis or accrual basis, and how do you know? Well, in this question, uh, we should know, after thinking about this just a little bit, we should know that we're under the accrual basis of income because we were counting accounts receivable here as revenue. And you do that because if you, under the accrual basis, as soon as you earn the revenue, you can record it, no matter when you receive the money. Let me repeat that. Under the accrual basis of accounting, you can record revenue as soon as you earn it, as soon as you've done the work. And so you increase revenue and increase accounts receivable. It doesn't matter when you get the money. Now, another question, again, it's not on the test, but something that's really good to understand is this. What would net income be for the period computed under the cash basis? Well, under cash basis, you only count revenue that you get in cash, and you only count expenses that you have to incur in cash. So, let's see. Do we have any revenues that we got in cash? And let's see. Looks like the answer to that would be uh, no. And so, it looks like our situation here, let's see, would be, no, I'm taking that back. I'm sorry. Uh, we collect cash on accounts receivable of $2,600. And so under the cash basis system, that's the first time we would recognize revenue. So the revenue under a cash basis would be $2,600. And expenses would be how much we paid out in cash for the $2,300 worth of other expenses here for $2,300. And so our net income would be under the cash basis system the cash that came in, which was $2,600, minus the cash that went out, which was $2,300, or net income was going to be $300. So you can see there's quite a difference there depending on how you account for this, uh, these transactions, whether they're under the accrual basis or one or under the cash basis. Let's go to the next question. This question wants to know, change equity by how much? So how much did equity change? So let's record these trains like we've got them. So the first transaction, ABC Company received a cash advance of $15,000 on December the 1st, year one, to provide services during the months of December, January, and February. So let's put this on a timeline. So here's a timeline, and on December the 1st, we received $15,000. This was December the 1st of year one, and they want to know how much the equity change. Okay, so all right, so here's how you'd record that in the accounting equation. Here's our accounting equation. December the 1st, year one, we'd increase assets or cash by $15,000, and we'd also increase liabilities, $15,000, because the reason for this is because on December the 1st, we got the money, but we haven't provided any services yet. We're not going to provide these services until December, all the month of December, all the month of January, and all the month of February. So they want to know the year in adjustment on December 31st, year one, to recognize the partial expiration of the contract will change equity by how much. So if we got the money on December the 1st, we've got to go through the month of December before we earn any of this 15000 So it looks like if this is a three-month contract, then we'll earn 5000 in December, 5000 in January, and 5000 in February to take the whole 15000 But if we recorded the, uh, the situation where we got the money first by increasing assets or cash, and increasing liability. Now it's December 31st, and let's make the adjusting entry, and let's see how much will uh, equity change by this situation. So on December 31st, we will do this. We will reduce $5,000 off of liabilities because in the month of December, we did the work, and we will increase equity or revenue by 5,000. So what happens is assets don't change, and liabilities go down 5,000, 
and equity under revenue goes up 5000 Or you might say this side overall doesn't change and the asset side doesn't change, but you're, what you're, you're taking 5000 out of liabilities and putting it into the equity because you've earned it. Uh, let's see, anything else? Uh, I don't have anything else here except that uh, in January we do the we do the same exact kind of adjustment. We would take another five thousand out of liabilities and put it into equity, and in February do the same thing. At the end of February we should have nothing in liabilities, and all of it should be recognized as revenue. So let's go on. In this situation, we've got the following account balances, uh, the financial statements, we've got cash, accounts receivable land, accounts payable. So we have a balance sheet here. And based on the above information, what is the balance of common stock for ABC? So we don't know what common stock is, but we do know what the assets are, and we know what the liabilities are, and we know what all of the equity is except for this one piece, which is common stock. So let's Keeping in mind that our accounting equation has got to always be in balance, let's do this. All of our assets would be the 56, 27, 92, all that's going to be on one side. Our liability is going to be $1,850, and our equity would be the rest of it. So now we can do this. We can say, okay, at the asset side equals these three things together, which is 175 The liabilities equal 1850 and to come up with the total equity, Right now, at this point in time, we subtract 1850 from 17,500, and so our equity in total is going to be 15,650. So, if we know it breaks into these pieces, then we can take each of these pieces or add them all together, subtract that from 15,650, and we should get what the common stock piece is. So, let's do that. So, common stock will be uh, the 15,650. Uh, on one side, that's the, what the total is, right? Equals common stock plus retained earnings, which would be all these pieces here together. So it looks like 15650 is going to be equal to common stock plus 6750, which is all these pieces together. And so if you take 6750 subtracted from 15650, you should get what the common stock is uh, going to be valued at, which are on the books for which is $8,900. So the look thing we're looking for is, what's the balance of common stock? It's $8,900. Next question. On this one, they want to know how much in supplies we're going to have and how much uh, in supplies expense we're going to have. So let's look at these transactions and record them as follows. All right, so here's our accounting equation. ABC Company began year one with $1,900 in supplies. So let's start that off. Supplies starting balance, $1,900. Okay. During the year, the company purchased $5,600 worth of supplies on account. So let's do that. Uh, and by the way, <clears throat> I'm putting this $1,900 down here on both sides just so that we start off with a balanced accounting equation. Okay. These are just beginning numbers. These transactions are what really going to make make a difference here. All right, so we've got uh, during the year the company purchased fifty six hundred dollars of supplies on account. So what will happen here is this just keeps us in balance, like I said. So we increase supplies under assets by fifty six hundred, and we also uh, increase liabilities by fifty six hundred, and that's because we bought these supplies on account on accounts payable. Next. Uh, the company paid $2,800 on accounts payable by end of year. So let's record that. So we're going to take $2,800 out of cash right there, and we're also going to reduce accounts payable by $2,800. So both sides, the asset side, liability side, both went down $2,800. Next, at the end of year one, ABC counted $3,300 worth of supplies on hand. Now, anytime you at the end of the year and you have supplies, when you count supplies, in this case we counted supplies of $3,300, that means that your supply account under assets has to equal what you count in the physical world. So if you count $3,300 in supplies, you need to have this ending balance of supplies be $3,300. So let's see what we got. So right now, before we do this uh, final ending information here, 
we're going to see what we have in balances so far for the assets, liabilities, and so on and so forth. So right now our cash is a minus $2,800. Our supplies account right now, before we do any adjusting, is $7,500. Our liabilities are $2,800. And it looks like our imbalanced uh, little retained earnings thing to keep us in balance is $1,900. So if you look at this side, which is 20, minus $2,800 plus $7,500, that side should equal, and it will, the liability equity side, which is $2,800, $1,900. They both sides should equal. And they do forty-seven hundred on the asset side, and forty-seven hundred dollars on the liability equity side. Now, they want to know again how much, uh, which show how much in supplies. Well, how much in supplies means we're going to show what we counted, which is thirty-three hundred dollars, and how much in supply expense. So, before the adjustment. If we had $7,500 here and we need this number to be $3,300, we're going to have to adjust it uh, again by counting it, right? Uh, if we got $3,300 worth of supplies on hand, then we need to adjust this down by this supply balance of $7,500 down by $4,200 to get a $3,300 balance. If the supplies account goes down by $4,200, that must mean we've used $4,200 worth of supplies. So asset supplies go down 4200 and supplies expense are going to be recorded on the retained earnings uh, column right here by $4,200. So the answer here is how much will we will have in supplies? Well, we'll have what we counted, which is 3300 And how much will supplies expense be? It'll be 4200 Let's take a look at the next one. We have uh, these transactions here. They want to know what would be the cash flow from operating activities. All right, cash flow from operating activities deals with just strictly cash revenues and cash expenses. Again, things that are only on the income statement. So let's uh, start the problem off with uh, we've got revenue on account uh, amounted to $4,600. Uh, collections uh, from uh, Cash collections from accounts receivable amounted to $4,300, and cash paid for uh, expenses $3,300, and the amount of employee salaries accrued at the end of the year was $1,100. So, these these things that we they, we have given to us in the problem, all we really care about is how much was either uh, received in cash or how much we paid out in cash. We don't care about anything except the cash part of the transactions and all we care about from that is what were revenues or expenses. So we've got cash collection from customers that's going to be a cash increase of $4,300. We've got cash paid out for cash expenses $3,300. So it looks like uh, we have a net cash flow increase from operating activities of $1,000. Revenue earned on account, which we had right here, revenue on account, 4600 we don't care about that because all we care about is the cash piece of that. And accrued salaries. Accrued salaries are salaries where people work for us and we owe them the money, but we're not going to pay them until another accounting period or something in cash that happens a little bit later. And so, therefore, they're not considered a cash expense, so they're not you know, going to be on this cash flow from operating activities. So the answer is going to be a thousand bucks. Next question. We have all these transactions and they want to know uh, return earnings as of 1231 year one would be what? And I'm giving you a hint to tell you that the uh, only things that affect revenues, uh, the only things that are going to affect revenue, excuse me, retained earnings are going to be revenues, expenses, and dividends. So from this list of all these things, all we have to really uh, start measuring would be the things up here that are either revenues, expenses, or dividends, because they just want to know what would retain earnings be as of December 31st, year one. So business issued $25,000 common stock. It has nothing to do with retained earnings as far as you know a revenue, expense, or a dividend. The uh, business purchased land for $17,000. Again, this is not a revenue, expense, or dividend. Services were provided to customers, $21,000 cash. That is a revenue, and that's going to increase retained earnings. Uh, well, by the way, we'll start with 
uh, year one's beginning balance of retained earnings, which is zero, we'll add the thirty-one thousand uh, dollars worth of revenue right there, which would be uh, looks like uh, is that right? Thirty-one thousand service to provided customers, twenty-one thousand dollars cash, and anything else there? Uh, I think that might be a typo, but let's see. Let's go a little further and see. So eighteen thousand three hundred dollars worth of uh, expenses, and we've got operating expenses of seventeen thousand, cash, salaries of thirteen was incurred, thirteen hundred. So it's eighteen three, okay, um, and revenues of twenty one thousand, thirty one thousand. Okay, yes, yes. Okay, back to this again. Let me go back. Yeah, we're under accrual basis accounting, so. Uh, we say we say that they want to know what the retained earnings are, and again, all we care about are revenues, expenses, and dividends. Well, we have revenues of thirty-one thousand because we have service provided to customers for cash of twenty-one thousand, plus service provided to customers for ten thousand on account. So add them together, and you have total revenue, cash base, a cash and accrued revenues together are going to be equaling, and they will affect retained earnings by an increase of thirty-one thousand. Same thing with expenses, 18.3. We've got operating expenses here of 17,000 plus salary expense, which was accrued. So we have a cash expense and we have an accrued expense. Both of them uh, are going to be counted under here because they will both affect the uh, retained earnings. And so that will decrease uh, retained earnings by 18.3. And let's see, do we have any dividends here? Uh, we have dividends of 9,000, which was the last transaction. 9,000 paid to stockholders. And so these three things will affect retained earnings. We'll combine all three of them to get our ending retained earnings balance of $3,700. So that's what the answer should be. And let's go to the next one. On the next one, they want to know what's net income. All right, so let's, uh, let's see. This is, in my opinion, a could possibly be considered a poorly worded question, uh, but I wanted to show it to you because if you see it on the test, you'll know how you should approach it. At least hopefully you'll know. All right, so we said we have got ABC Company provided services for $24,000 cash uh, during year one. So uh, the question here is what was, uh, the question want to know what was net income? And what the question really should be is what was accrual-based net income because this is an accrual-based answer they're going to give us. So I want to make sure you knew that uh, you were, we're talking about accrual-based income. So you earn income on your accrual basis when you do the work and not necessarily when you get the money. So here we go. So our revenue, we provided services for $24,000 cash. That's no question about that. That's uh, any way you look at that, that's $24,000 revenue. So that goes up revenue. And we have expenses of 20000 It says ABC incurred $20,000 of expenses on account during the year. All right. So the expenses, we incurred expenses. Could be all kinds of rent. Could be salaries. Could be whatever. And we, when you say we've incurred these on account, that means we've, we, we owe the money for what these different expenses, but we haven't like, paid it yet. But that will still be considered an expense. Now, uh, it says uh, $6,000 of that had been paid in cash. Well, that's including the $20,000, so we don't want to do anything with that at all except just list the expenses a total of $20,000. And so our net income under the accrual basis system accounting will be $4,000. So that's, what net in, that's the answer. What is net income? $4,000. And so what will be cash basis income? Well, and under cash basis, all we care about are revenues that we receive in cash and expenses that we had to pay out in cash. And again, uh, I don't think the question is going to ask you this, but I want you to still, again, make sure you understand the difference between accrual-based accounting or net in in income calculation and a cash basis net income. So our revenue will be $24,000, which in this case will be the $24,000 cash we received in year one. And the expenses are only be six thousand dollars because we only paid six thousand dollars out in cash, and so under the cash basis income, our our uh, excuse me under cash basis our net income would be eighteen thousand. So you can see there's a quite a bit of difference there. And that's why I said there's a possibility you can you could have considered this question 
kind of poorly worded because all they asked for what was net income. They should have asked what was accrual basis net income. Anyway, the answer up here is this, 4000 Let's go to the next one. We have all these transactions. They want to know what is net cash flow from operating activities. Again, operating activities are things that it could be revenues or expenses, and they're going to be cash-based revenue or expenses. So uh, we have uh, common stock issued. That's not a revenue or expense. Provided services on account. That's not a rev. It's a revenue, but it's not a cash-based revenue. Then it says we've got paid 2,050 cash for operating expenses. That's definitely going to be an operating cash flow expense. And so again, well, all we care about is cash revenues, cash expenses only. And we do have cash revenue of $2,800 on number four, the, the next one, which is uh, cash collected uh, from accounts receivable. And we also had a cash expense of 2,050. And then let's see. So that's going to be 2,050 cash paid for expenses. And the cash paid to dividends, dividends uh, are not considered a operating flow. They're not something that, uh, that is going to be more of a financing type of cash flow. So the answer we're looking for here is uh, to net cash flow from operating activities would be cash revenue minus cash expenses or a net cash flow, positive cash flow of $750. Our next one, they want to know what would be the total amount of assets shown on ABC Company's December 31st year one balance sheet, total assets. So here we go, here's our accounting equation. And the first thing we did was we issued $7,600 worth of common stock, so cash, cash receivable, Cash goes up $7,600, and under equity, that goes up $7,600 under common stock. We provided services of $3,900 on account, so accounts receivable goes up $3,900, and so does equity under revenues. That would be a revenue type of account under equity, $3,900. Both sides go up. Next, we paid uh, $2,000 cash in operating expenses, so cash goes down $2,000. And operating expenses, it goes under equity as a reduction under because it's an expense. Then we've got collected $2,700 worth of cash from accounts receivable. So cash goes up $2,700. Accounts receivable goes down $2,700. Overall, assets didn't change. Um, so if assets don't change, liabilities, equity doesn't change. Then we've got we paid 180 in cash dividends to stockholders, so cash goes down 180, and equity goes down uh, under common stock of 180. And so now we want to know what the total assets are. So add all these things up. So cash is going to be 8120. Receivables will be $1,200. So total assets right now will be some of these two, which is 9320. Anything else here? Looks like 